Hello, uh, this is Vanessa, Vanessa Garden, and today I would like to do a video on something that it has been quite a nightmare sometimes in logic, which is creating stems. Uh, this is also related to another video that Christian Henson from Spitfire did uh, about this topic. So thanks, Christian, for bringing uh, this up and for all the wonderful videos that you are putting together. Um, so let's look into this session. Uh, this is a mock-up on a piece by Paul Dukas. Uh, it's called something like L'Apprendiz or Seer, something like that. Um, and you will see that it has a few bars only and I have separated like different families. So we have the woodwinds and then we have harp and then we have the strings uh, in different folders. Uh, the goal of this uh, session, let's say that, that they ask us to submit uh, the different families in different stems, okay? So we'll have one audio file for each of those uh, subdivided families. Um, so let's get into how do we route things because it is a kind of an unusual and uncommon or untraditional or uh, non-traditional way of doing it. So when we get here into the good winds, you will see that all of them are going to stereo out and harp the same and strings the same. I have already set up like three different reverbs, one for good winds and one for harp and one for strings that, so as you can see, they use bus one for good winds, bus two for harp and bus three for all those strings. Okay. Now, I would like to route things differently in order to create those systems. So check this out. If we select, so shift and click uh, from the first uh, track to the last uh, track of the of those wood wood winds, and now we click here on the output, and then we can select a blank bus, for example, bus four. Automatically, Logic is going to create an auxiliary that right now is called auxiliary four, and we're going to give it a name. So let's say that those are my good winds. One little thing that we need to add. So if we're sending the dry signal of those of those instruments to that bus of good winds, we have to also send the reverb to that bus four. So everything will be going together, meaning all the individual instruments plus the reverb into that bus, bus four, to this auxiliary again that is called good winds. Great. Uh, next. Now it will be the harp going to its own bus, and that will be bus five, which is the one that is blank right now. Uh, we will name this as harp. And then we'll move on and we'll take all our strings and put it into another bus that is going to be bus number six. Great. Let's see, so this will be called strings. Perfect. Now, remember that we have to also change our harp reverb and the strings reverb. Perfect. Once we are on this stage, if you want, we can color things a tiny bit differently so we don't get confused. Great, excellent. The trick here will be, so if we want this to be bounced out, Check this out. The first thing that has to happen, so step number one will be to have all those auxiliaries and put those into this tracks view. There's a shortcut that you can use, which is control T, or you can just select the three of them. In this case, right click into these, uh, right click into these tracks and then create track. Excellent. Let's put those on the bottom of the session. Just to make sure that those are our stems. Um, the next step will be, I'm careful on this, to create a blank, yes, yeah, I'm saying, a blank region uh, for every one of those stems with the length of the stem that we want to create. So we have here a few bars um, and I want to start bouncing from what right now is bar two for me until bar, let's say 43. Okay, so I'm going to change this to pencil two and I'm going to create one green that goes from here to here, for example. Great. Then I'll do the same for the next one and I'll do the same for the next one. You can do it manually or you can just option and drag this 
and then rename it with the, with the name of the track. And you can do that by doing Shift Option N. So it takes the name of, the, of your track. Uh, so at, right now I have three empty regions called Goodwin's Harp and Strings that they are kind of like in the tracks of those auxiliaries that I have created. And you will be thinking, wait a sec, you're putting blank regions into auxiliaries? Yes. And that's why I said that it was not a non-traditional method, okay? So check this out. If I select these three regions and I go to File, and then I go to Export three regions as audio files, this is the beauty part of this method, which is I'm selecting my format, Wave 24, Bypass effects, I don't want that. I can include the audio tail in case, you know, uh, I know that there is some audio hap uh, tail happening, if that's the case. In case it has some volume or pan animation, you can also click this. I do not want to normalize it. And uh, let's say that you're also like kind of like working on an episode of a TV show. So instead of waiting for the whole hour to do it on real time, you can use this method by those blank regions and doing offline. Um, the other good news is you can personalize the way you name things. Um, this method is actually really, really uh, similar to the one on Cubase, where you can do a batch export of stems. Uh, so we're going to kind of like work similarly to that. We're going to customize this, this, um, this field that is called custom. And we're going to put it, like, let's say that this is my, you know, a uh, Ducas. So I know that that's that projects and then underscore and then it will be given the name of the that region that we what that we put here uh, so that's really it now if i if i click on the sport just on its own is gonna do good wins and harp and strings so now um getting into while well, that you know does it thing I'm going to go into the, let's see. Okay, so here's a, this finder with that bounces um, folder. And as you can see, it's put in the custom text underscore and then it's doing all of that offline. So hopefully, now if we go and uh, play my harp, this is it. really quiet so that's harp with the reverb um, those are strings okay Great. And now uh, let's check out the woodwinds. So as you can see, this is a really, really simple method, um, non-traditional, but you know, it works. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful and, and I hope this helps. Uh, one last note before I actually um, stop my video is that you will realize that this didn't have any processing. I have on this stereo out some plugins as kind of the, um, mastering, if you want to call it like that. So if you want those plugins to be applied into those stems, they will have to be inserted on those auxiliaries, meaning that I will have to do this kind of like three times. Yes. So every one of those uh, stems, you will have the um, kind of the master chain, if you want to call it like that. 
And on the, in those, in this case, you don't want to bypass um, those plugins because that's kind of your mastering chain. So you have to kind of like do it three times on this case because I had three, three um, stems. Okay. So doing that, and then you can use exactly the same method to export. Okay. So again, I hope it was helpful. Um, thank you for so much for watching. Bye.